Alright, the last time I made a video of this game was on May 15th. It is currently June 9th. We've had a lot of turns since then. It's two and a hundred, turn 135. Pretty much everything I talked about in the last video happened. Uh, I built this academy, right? I was able to build the Great Library and the National College, and my science is 55, <laughs> right? Uh, my science is a lot, right? I have lots of technologies. If we look at this technology tree, I'm already look, working on compass here. Look at all those sciences. Like, I pretty much got everything. You know, I was trying to work towards banking here because I need some fucking money. Right? I got no. Mo oh, I got minus one money, but that's because I was able to build this East India Company, which gives me four money. Um, and now I'm going. To, I need to defend myself against the the evil Rim here, as you can see. Uh, not Pike Man. Uh, I'm probably gonna build a composite bow, man. I need more ranged weaponry, right? But I can't even afford to. I can upgrade this, but I can't afford it. It costs eighty, right? I can upgrade this to a knight. I can't. It costs a hundred, right? It's like, I could research, um, if I wanted to, next, I could go for, uh, what, it, um, what's the thing that, um, Pike Man turns into? It's around here somewhere. <laughs> oh, I just got Pike Man. I guess the thing Pike Man turns into, I can, I can get Crossbow Man, but I can't afford to upgrade into that either, right? Musket Man? So I could go for Musket Man, but it's like, I can't. I can't aff actually afford to upgrade anything. I'd have to build them. And my production is low, and I only have one city with eight people in it. <laughs> um, okay, so here's some other things that happened, right? So I built this citadel, and the reason I built this citadel is to defend the south, right? Because I don't have enough units to defend the north and the south, and it sucks to move my guys back and forth over this river, right? So I built this citadel to defend from the south, mostly barbarians coming from over here, and they were coming from over here at one point. Uh, so and the scout here can make me help me see to make sure everything's going on and the horseman can sort of is fast enough to run back and forth uh, Rim has one sword man down here. I think he's gonna go for my horses, but I got a horseman here. I think I'll actually move uh, I don't know can he move and pillage all at once? I'm gonna have to move my horseman Well, I can't move out of here out of there because he'll move into my citadel So I think I have to move my horseman here to defend the horses ironically <laughs> Uh, good thing that Horseman is strong against Swordman. Uh, and this is all I've got to defend the North against. I'm probably losing this game. Okay. I wasn't able to build a second city because where the fuck am I going to build it? There's a city-state here. There's a city-state here. Rim's borders are like right here. He expanded real fast. What am I going to build a city over here in this kind of area? That doesn't really help me very much, right? It's just a wheat and a copper. It's okay, but it's not great. Um... I guess I could go, could have gone more north and grabbed some of this stone too. Oh, my border is actually expanded into this iron here. Uh, but I already see the other reason I built the citadel is to get this copper and this iron, which I'm not I'm not I'm working the iron, but I'm not working the copper. It's too far away. Uh, I guess I could build a city down in this area for the copper and the cattle. But you know this allowed me to get this copper, which was in demand in Babylon. It was we love the we love the Scott day. Uh, and I also got the happiness from having the luxury goods. See, plus four copper, plus four marble. Here's my marble. Um, right, I eventually was able to build a second academy, because getting one science, I mean, with a, with a great scientist, didn't really offer a lot of benefit at this point, but two academies, you know. Right? If you look at the, the score chart here... <laughs> I'm winning in science and losing by a l oh only a little bit in approval. I'm losing by a lot in soldiers. I'm losing by I have half as much land, more less than half as much land, less than half as much money. I have a third the money Rim has. Manufactured goods, 55 to 16. So I got less than half of his hammers. Four times less food, 25% <laughs> of the food, and my population is. See three, six, seven, way, 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 way less. I have like no people, right? Not enough people living in Babylon. It's there's just a few really smart people living in Babylon, and that's it. Uh, so that I couldn't build a bigger army because I don't have a lot of hammers. It takes me five turns to build a thing, right? Uh, I don't have a lot of food, so I can't grow. I could have gotten money from these whales. If you work whales, they give you like money. But I can't, I can't get whales because he's got these. Try he built boats first. 
I actually built a trireme and a workboat at one point and put them on a whale, and he was able to kill my trireme and destroy my workboat. So I spent a whole lot of turns doing that for no, for, with no results. I also spent a whole bunch of turns making two caravans to get money. I sent one caravan over here, one caravan over here, and even though I tried, I guess, the best I could, I wasn't able to defend the, the caravans, because if I did, I would have just lost the units that were defending the caravan, and then still lost the caravan anyway. So it's like, like I lose the caravan and my units, and then I'm, right, or just lose the caravan. So I only have minus one money, thanks to the East India Company, but, uh, yeah, I, I just can't afford to have <laughs> an army, and I can't build an army. But if I could, I could build a really fancy army that's got higher tech than Rim's army has. Also, he was able to... The city-states on the other side of the world, these two, look, they're at war with me. Rim allied with them, right? He was able to appease them. I didn't even get to meet them because I didn't even have one spare unit to send exploring around the war because I had to use these guys to defend myself from the barbarians, let alone Rim. Um... So yeah, my plan from the other video totally worked. I have mad science, and Babylon, you're supposed to get mad science and turtle up, but that is not working. I mean, look at the score, 1052 to 438, right? I think I'm just going to give up here. Um, he just built the statue of Zeus, and he built the Temple of Artemis, so he's got, like, the military-related wonders. His guys are strong. Enemy unit spider on territory. Yeah, oh, that one? Okay, that's fine. Um... Right, so basically the thing we have learned here, right, is this strategy that I'm doing here, it could be viable in a a real game where there's like a lot of a lot of people and there's more land, right? It's like I, if there was more land on this map, I would have been able to expand a little bit. I would have had room, you know, I would have had some city states near me I could have caravaned with to get more money, you know, that no one would be able to really interfere with. Um, you know, I'd be able to work my own land without there being enemy triremes there immediately destroying everything, <laughs> right? Because they'd be, you know, have a whole world to explore and do other shit, right? Uh, in a duel game, I think the duel of Civ V, military is what matters because the map is so small, right? You can pretty much control the whole map, and if you can control the map, you control everything, right? No, they can't caravan, right? The other strategies are just completely shut out by military, right? There's no there's no physical there's not enough hexes to work any other strategies if someone else has military dominance, right? So I think the real duel game happens when both people are going military and they actually are like sort of competing with each other and there's like a real war. It's like you can't just one person dominating. And you saw that in the previous game when I was China, which is militaristic against Rims, Memphis or, or Egypt, right? Is I was able to just win the game, just no matter what he was building, it didn't, you know, it didn't matter. It's like I had military might. I was China. I had great generals. I had super double crossbow guys. It basically cancels out everything the other person's doing, you know. Just if you just have military might. Uh, so I think if we start the next duel, I'm going to be going with some sort of militaristic strategy, no matter what, in every single duel. Right, no other. I don't think there's any viable alternative strategy besides, you know, building up military. At the very least, you need to build more. I mean, I I think you know this is more military than I would usually build if I was playing single player. Right, I definitely you know if I was playing single player here and I would not have this situation, you know, the next thing I would have built probably would have been you know look I haven't built any of this stuff, right. You know, I would really like to build, you know, um, you know, this workshop, right? Because I don't have a lot of production. I'd like to build a granary to get my guys growing, even, you know, get just get the two food. You know, I'd like to build the aqueduct, the water mill. I'd love to build a lot of these things, uh, but I can't, right? Uh, I'd also have caravans, money, and be able to upgrade these guys. Anyway, that's how this game ended. <laughs> It's not to look so good, but I, you know, I did build the walls of Babylon and stuff, right? I'd be able, if it was single player, I would be defending myself very, very well against, you know, the the threats you you face in a single player game or or any game with a lot of a lot more land and a lot more civs. But in a game of just two civs, um, you know, no matter how well you execute the strategy, it's the wrong one. All right, so stay tuned for for game four where. Uh, we're probably both going to build armies, and we're going to have to play some, you know, some action. 
I don't know if I'll choose China or maybe Germany. All right, can I just over... Germany could be good if you get it... If you just overwhelm them with warriors right at the start of the game. But I feel like I know how to play China better. I'll see if there's other options, too. There's so many civs, I don't even know them all. Uh, thus ends this game. It was a valiant effort, but Scott was convinced that the game was over, and he has conceded the game to me. The score is now two games Rim, one game Scott, and we are about to continue our fourth game. Scott has decided that he's going to play a heavy military game next, so he's either going to be Germany or China again. China, remember, is how we beat me with Egypt. So, uh, you can see what I was doing here to actually end this. I'd won this a long time ago, and I was sort of giving Scott a chance to bust out, and I was also actually curious myself if his significant science advantage was going to be enough to beat my uh, other advantages, which might have been true back when I only had these two cities. But, I mean, this city is already pretty huge with nothing improved yet. Like, I was on... I had already dominated the entire map. There was probably literally nothing Scott could have done, especially now that I'm basically going to be allies with everyone. And I was about to finish the Terracotta Army, which would have given me another Pikeman, another Composite Bowman, another Swordman, another Horseman. But this was not enough, because as you can see, now the approval had dropped a little bit. I didn't forget exactly. I think it's just because my population was growing so rapidly because of how giant my empire is. I mean, look at these populations. Look at this ridiculous city. But my population, Scott had no people. He had no crops. So not only was he behind in population, but I was growing at a, at a catastrophic rate compared to him. Uh, I could build anything I wanted at any point. I had effectively infinite money, for, at least for maintenance. I couldn't buy things in cities, but I didn't have money to last the entire game, even at a significant deficit. My army is not that much bigger than his, so my plan, had he not resigned to force the issue... You see how I moved this guy over here? That was... To threaten this. Now he's pulled this guy over here. I was going to let the barbarians just be for now. Though I think this was targeted by a city state. Yes, I was about to be allies with Prague. They would have sent a few troops, but not actually done anything important. But then I probably might have just bought alliance here. and run out the rest of the game. But this line was not going to advance on Scott's city. I was just going to leave this here, continue to build siege units, and then as soon as the... Ter I was going to wait until the Terracotta army was done. I was just going to keep building units for spam here. Probably start building triremes again. I was going to let this worker finish and then also build military. I was going to finish the Terracotta army, and all those new units were going to march along the bottom... And then I was just going to completely surround his empire and then just compress in all at once. And that would have been it. Well, let's see how this plays out because I want to see the statistics of the game, like the graphs and everything. So I actually have to win this war. So I'm just going to push. The AI won't play Scott's army as well. It's not really good at the advance wars thing. Oh, that great general is going to be way back here, isn't he? Yep. I can't embark yet. I got, like, no science here. It means this guy needs an escort. I guess barbarians aren't likely to come in there. See, I've drawn his units out. Hmm. Oh. And he doesn't have that many. So I can basically just wipe them out from this relative position of safety. Now, if I really want to push it, I could literally build a settler here, throw him over here, and just build a city so this would all count as my territory. 
Ooh, he's gonna be a little aggressive. Well, I'll heal. And I'll damage. Let's just play the attrition game. I could march in here and finish this guy. But I'm not gonna. I'll let him attack me. Let that unit heal a little bit. Now remember, if Scott had continued to play, I would not have moved in for the kill right now. I actually would have just maintained this line, but I'm going to move in for the kill as quickly as possible just to end this. Being allies with them would actually be a good idea. The merchants and the traders. Oh look, I got some crappy uh profit. Some science. I'm so far behind on science. Now I'm going for knights. That was I was gonna get the knights to also really push this to its end. I guess he retreated that guy. Let's shift the line. Now notice, this is his only ranged unit. And the city itself. So I'm going to stay out of range of the city until I can destroy all his other units. The advanced warsiness of this is actually pretty straightforward. See this catapult? Go right on this hill and bombard the city when the time is right. I'll have another catapult soon. I can just bust out a military. Oh, we retreated with the other guy, too. Let's continue to menace. And for good measure, keep playing the Advance Wars game back there. Move every guy all the time. I don't want to start the full assault yet. So Buenos Aires, I could give you some money, you'd be my ally, but you wouldn't be a significant factor in this war. You don't have that many units. I guess you might send a horseman over here. It's not that important. Swing it around. Oh, look at all this biz. Barbarian encampment. Yeah, just gonna ignore that. Actually, maybe we'll send the horseman up to get it. Get some more happiness, get my general in place. Really should have left the general back there and waited for... Might as well get the other sugar. Everyone else just fortify and wait. You've got to be ready to move in here. Let's just leave those steady for now. Is there any point in building anything here at this point? Start pumping out more military units just in case. Sure, they're not that weak. Keep on menacing. Oh, you're gonna come down and fight here. Nice, that just means you've got no units up here. It's time to start pillaging. Guess I can move in range of the city all at once. I think it might be time. I've not even waited for the Terracotta army. So close to finishing the Terracotta army. No other wonder is really going to help me win the war. Should I just move in? Should I just rush in right now? Well, let's stage it a little further.
Oh, it's a spearman up there. Or a pike man. Oh, he retreated to the edge of the map. What's he doing? All right. I'm going to lose the swordsman. But that's fine. Because it literally doesn't matter. What's this guy think he's doing? I guess I have no military over here right now. That guy could be moderately dangerous in that... Well, no, he couldn't because, look, there's nothing to pillage. There's literally nothing in the city to pillage. Surrounding. I think next turn I might just move in. You hang out here and wait for the actual giant army to come. Yeah, he's gonna come pillage my biz. My one pillageable biz. Oh, he came out to attack me here. Nice. Attacking cities. You just go heal. You. Go replace. Let's march in. Oh. Yeah, let's stay there. You. Heal. Alright, let's distract to the city. Now I've got the most ridiculous army the world has ever seen. I could start banging on the city more, but I do actually want to complete the destruction of the actual army insofar as I can. Even if I'm taking losses. Sure. Let's just start that process now.
That guy won't even get to the front in time. Just in case, mobile units. Because they can get over there quickly. Trireme won a turn! Let's just start banging out triremes. I mean, look at that. Don't care, don't care, don't care. Alright, Barbarian, pillage away! Pillage! Wow, I can't believe that Trireme survived. I guess I should start taking out that unit. Or I could just start hammering on the city. It's not a lot of damage. I'll work on the unit. I'll actually let that trireme heal. Oops! That was not what I intended to do. I misclicked there. That actually will cost me... Oh well, I can salvage that easily enough. Oh, another great general. Just keep on keeping on. Really a shame I can't go over the water. That's what happens when we have no science. Oh, it's an AI. The workers are fleeing. Thank you. Yep. Badoom! Badoom! You can see this war is just by the numbers. And you can see that I'm doing okay. I could have done a lot better. If I had been willing to wait, but I wasn't willing to wait. I tend to be very conservative in warfare in these games. You see, my giant deficit does not matter. I built up that store specifically for the end of the game. Might as well protect this worker. like to be friends with Hong Kong again. Sugar? All they want is sugar? All they want is sugar. I got their sugar. I'll have sugar shortly. Sorry, Prague. Come through your territory. Wish I was still friends with you.
All right, so now I'm running at a significant deficit, and that won't help at all. Let's just start building a market. I guess I could trade. Not that it'll really matter. No, 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 no. Oops, did I click yes? Oh, no, no, no. Just Wellington and Hong Kong and all that biz. Alright. I wish the city state wasn't in my way. It's actually really annoying. See, I'm playing fast and loose because it just really doesn't matter. Oh my god, get out of my way. Finish that sugar soon, then I'll be happy again. Yeah, next turn. Get up on the hill. Doesn't matter. It's gonna end. Oh, look at all this. Look at all this going on here. Let's just blow everything up. None of the rest of this matters. I'm just going to end it right now. Not even get into what could have been. The world has been convulsed by war. Many great and powerful civilizations have fallen. Many but or you have one. And emerged victorious. The world will long remember your glorious triumph. So, final demographics. Well, I guess that's useless because I'm the only civilization. Not bad. So let's see. Let's just play this and watch what happened. All right, so my city's expanding. See, my city started larger than Scott's already. So it, so I had a pretty good advantage there. Now look, I started my second city then. Scott never tried to make his second city. In fact, he wasted his great general. Look at this nonsense. So I start with my extra territory, and I take advantage of it by not using workers right away. And I rushed to get this guy up around here and build a city in an awesome spot there to deny Scott the map. And it totally worked. Look how early. Look at that. It's, it's a pretty early city for me, the way I play this game. Meanwhile, Scott just uses a great general here. That's how desperate he was to get that luxury resource, that copper, I guess. He really should have built the city there. I don't know why he didn't. And then, see, I built that extra city... For no real reason, I could have built them all over the place, it just didn't matter, but... 
Let's see what the graphs show. So score doesn't mean much in this game, but you can see we were close. I was always ahead, but not by that much. And then there was a huge turning point right here. City state. Wow, look at this. Scott was never more powerful than a city state. I guess Wellington is an example. They're all about the same. But seriously. <laughs> Scott, we were all basically similar score wise until right there. No one ever had a city connection, I guess. I got rid of the city state because that doesn't matter. Hmm. We were actually pretty even on culture until the end when I blitzed it with a bunch of wonders. Again, the happiness thing was really only in the end when I blitzed it. Now, this is where Scott actually, his city was doing better because he was focusing on it while I expanded a little bit. And again, right here is that turning point. That's when I built the second city. And then you see it was just a heavy progression of food up, which meant my population would grow. While Scott's, meanwhile, stayed basically static for the entire game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And you can see it was dropping here only because my population was rising. And because I lost some city-state allies that I would have had to... See, if I was playing this game when there were other people involved, I wouldn't have done that war right when I did. Instead, I would have done something slightly different, held out longer, and continue to bolster my domestic policy. So Scott's got really ahead of me on technology. But it took him until here. So just, it's interesting, just as I built my city, was right when, I guess this is around when he got the Great Library, and he just got all this tech. But you can see that while he got a boost ahead, I caught up on my rate, and we were progressing at about the same rate over that. He could never get further ahead of me than he already was. And even if he did, he did not have the economy to actually use that stuff. Never had more than one worker. But you can see this graph says it all. Right around there, that second city, I just pushed. And my population was what did it. It was just my production and my population. Map control won this game. Yeah, this is the turning point, basically. He built the Great Library right around him, and I, here, and I built my second city. I don't know why they have this graph. It just seems like a silly graph. Huh. So, I guess I bought stuff. This is when I upgraded a bunch of units. Forget what I bought here. Right here. Well, that's total gold. See, that, my economy got weird at the end just because I built all those units, most of which never even engaged in the war. But gold per turn. Oh, Scott wasn't making that much gold from those caravans because when I took them both out, look at that. So let's see, all this is founded... So, like, I declared war on him way early to muss around. Yeah, he built a great library. Like, you see, it was right around there. I built a second city. Scott built a great library. And remember, he beat me to the fucking great library, too. And that was the turning point, actually, in the game. Right around here, the decisions that were made right here determined the entire rest of the course of the game. I got my Pantheon, which I never really needed. I picked a very specific belief only for this sort of dual map. Had a golden age, didn't really matter. You can see I got my city states. And then it's just a sea of me doing stuff until the game ended. Oh, my people are unhappy now! I could fix that. I could easily turn this into. Because look. 
Oh yeah, there it's fine. The world is mine.